Hey guys, and welcome back to the Caterpillar series. Now, if you missed the first episode, you can follow the link here, or I can give you a quick rundown. So basically, I found hundreds, maybe even thousands of caterpillars on trees near the beach. I clipped a couple branches that had a few caterpillars on, took them home, and later found out they were brown tail moth caterpillars, which can be dangerous if handled or eaten and can sometimes affect asthma sufferers if the hairs are inhaled. I actually have asthma but they're in a well ventilated area and I've had no problems at all. Now finding out these were somewhat dangerous was quite a shocker since I feel 90% of British wildlife is completely harmless. However I did decide to keep them and this is part two of their progress. Now before I begin I would like to point out there has been more about these caterpillars in the news, so cue the dramatic music. Yeah, in places they are actually culling them. Regardless, hopefully my few will survive to adulthood. Now, I'm not 100% sure how many I have. I don't think there's many, maybe between four and six. But interestingly, recently they have all disappeared. Now, a little over a week ago, I noticed they had started to make potentially cocoons. As you can see in this time lapse, they are certainly building something with their silk. However, they decided to build it just where the zip opens of their cage. We we'll call it a cage. But anytime I would go to spray the water in there or put in new food, this would obviously rip the tent or the cocoon a little bit each time. And I think they soon realised this wouldn't be the best place to settle down. Now, during this time, I wondered how their relatives in the wild were doing. So, just a month ago or so, these trees were absolutely covered in caterpillars, and then very soon, the tree was left with, like, no foliage at all. When we went back, we only found a handful of caterpillars. Honestly, I think I counted maybe three or four at the most on just an odd branch here and there. There were no signs of cocoons or much evidence they'd even been there besides obviously the lack of leaves and the leftover tents that they originally hatched out in when they were caterpillars. So have the majority of the caterpillars already pupated, hatched out of moths and left? Have they been predated on or have pest control completely wiped them out? We shall never know for sure. What we do know, however, is my caterpillars have now made cocoons in more reliable, safer places leaves. So I want to thank Animal Lover 13 for suggesting putting the branches in some water to make them last longer. The caterpillars definitely appreciate it since one or maybe a few caterpillars have actually built a cocoon in the plum leaves. Now another cocoon I found was on the side of the cage between the netting and the dried leaves. Considering we had maybe four to six caterpillars and I can only find two cocoons. I'm assuming they've either grouped together in these cocoons, which I, I don't know if they do that, or maybe I'm just missing a few. I'm not really sure, but this is all I found. Now I tried my best to film up close and take some pictures and I have kind of found that there's obviously lots of silk, but as well as that, you can actually see the caterpillar hairs in them. Now, as we know, that's an irritant that will put predators off if they try to eat these caterpillars before and I do wonder if it's a last attempt to protect the pupa from being attacked whilst it's transitioning. It also appears that these caterpillars transform in their cocoons so some caterpillars will molt into chrysalis and I believe some caterpillars actually do both. They'll make a cocoon and in that cocoon they will then molt into a chrysalis. You may remember Harry the Hawk Moth, he built a cocoon with leaves and silk and I really love that time lapse of him. And once he'd done all that, he then transitioned into a chrysalis afterwards. So I could take away that cocoon 
and show you the chrysalis. However, since they do most of their transitioning in this one cocoon, I don't want to take anything away and try to expose it and potentially damage them and their process, so we will have to wait. Now the good thing is apparently it only takes up to 20 days for the adults to emerge and by the time this video goes up we should be approaching the end of the pupation period, so fingers crossed we should have some adults very soon. So if you haven't already, please subscribe so you don't miss a video. Also, we're getting very close to 120,000 subscribers, which is insane. I, I don't know why. I'm genuinely just a normal girl who collects bugs and has geckos, but I greatly appreciate it. So if you haven't already and you want to contribute to that, thank you very much. Now, before I go, I would like to address one thing because a lot of people wondered why on earth am I keeping these if they can be dangerous to humans and potentially other animals. The thing is, they have evolved this defense mechanism that protects a lot of the young from being predated on, therefore giving them a far better chance to make it to adulthood and reproduce. That is their like purpose in life. We can't take this personally. Yes, they can have an ill effect on us and other animals if we come into contact them, if you try to eat them, inhale them, I don't know what people are doing, but just because they have a defense mechanism, this shouldn't rank their lives less worthy than any other creature. Yes, they can be destructive, but every kind of caterpillar can be to particular plants. So I will do my best to get these guys to adulthood and I will release them back into the wild where they originally hatched out as caterpillars. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.